Hello, everyone. It's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Um, I read this article in The Atlantic, which I think is a great magazine, saying that electric vehicles are bringing out the worst in us. It was kind of a provocative title for me as an EV enthusiast, so I read it, and I thought it was a great article, so I wanted to kind of go through the major points of it. And the major points of it are that um, big vehicles are killing Americans. And we've known that in America, the cars are getting bigger. SUVs and trucks used to be about 30% of the sales, and now they're close to, I think, 50% of the sales or more. Actually, I think they're like 57% of the sales. So trucks and SUVs have overtaken passenger cars as the dominant vehicle in America, and, and the trucks themselves are getting bigger. And they made a quote in here back in 2002, New York Times writer Keith Bradshaw, he noted this book, High and Mighty, where he's talking about the trends in cars. A marketing savant in the 1990s who helped launch the SUV trend liked to compare the road to a battlefield. Bradshaw quoted him saying, my theory is the reptilian always wins. The reptilian says, if there's a crash, I want the other guy to die. Of course, I can't say that out loud. And he probably meant the guy in the other car but they're talking about how these larger cars are basically more dangerous to everyone else other than the people in the car. Um, and so an another thing is that these large trucks and SUVs are causing huge front blind zones. Here's a test where they have a woman in a Ford F, I think it's an F-250. Um, but basically there is a blind zone of about 16 feet in front of the car. So this this uh, driver cannot see any of these kids. They're like, they're totally oblivious to having any of these kids in front of them. And there were, there have been instances where small children died because their parents or their neighbor ran over them in the large truck because they just plain didn't see them. So there's larger blind spots. And of course, greater mass um, causes um, greater fatality. So they said, this was a study um, in the uh, review of economic studies that said that they, they looked at the various data on traffic fatalities and passenger fatalities, and they, they said that being hit by a vehicle that is a thousand pounds heavier generates a 40 to 50 percent increase in fatality risk. So this trend has all also been driven by the fact that these light these uh, SUVs and trucks are considered light duty trucks. And they are a different, legally a different classification than cars. And they're exempt from many of the um, safety regulations um, that are imposed on cars and fuel economy regulations. So, um, you know, Biden set out these new fuel economy standards and they touted it as being really good for the environment and all this stuff um, because there's a fleet average of 40 miles per hour, which is up from Trump's administration proposal of 32 miles per hour. They said that this was a big thing. However, this there's a glaring loophole that says that if you're a van pickup SUV or some crossover classified as light duty trucks, you don't have you're exempt from these things. That's essentially more than half the vehicles that are sold in the United States. So these things don't um, don't mean much. And so not only are cars in general getting bigger, if you look at um, electric vehicles, they're even heavier because of the battery. Uh, so this is a this is a paper in Nature, and if you guys don't know, Nature is basically the premier uh, scientific journal in the world. There's two basically. There's one called Nature, and there's another one called Science. And if you publish any really important scientific um, journal uh, articles, you're going to publish in one of these two papers, like. If you're a scientist and you get one article published in Nature or Science, that is kind of the apex of your career to have a Nature or Science publication. And most scientists will never have a Nature or Science publication in their entire career. But anyway, this is a, a Nature um, article. And they're talking about how the electric vehicles are heavier than internal combustion vehicles. So you see the electric F-150, is on average about 700 kilograms heavier than the gas F-150. The Kona is heavier. The Leaf is heavier than the Versa, which is its, um, which is its uh, basically gas counterpart. And 
the likelihood of passengers being killed in a collision with another vehicle increases by 12% for every 500 kilogram difference between the two vehicles. So it basically, what this does is this quote battleground mentality has made um, our roads essentially an arms race. So people are like, well, if we get into a car accident, I don't want to be the one to die. I want the other guy to die. Or maybe you don't necessarily want the other guy to die, but you want to live. So you buy a bigger car. And then that person says, well, I want to have the bigger car. And then everyone just keeps getting the bigger car until we end up with cars like this thing, the 9,000 pound electric Hummer. And this is leading to the second part of that Atlantic article that said, not only are these things more dangerous to everyone else, but they're not good for the environment either. And so this is a paper uh, study that showed that the 9,000 Hummer is way worse for the environment than a Chevy Malibu. And this is a, another article from the Journal of Cleaner Production that says, when there's battery supply constraints, making large SUVs and pumping a ton of batteries into them, that takes away batteries from smaller more efficient evs and that overall could increase co2 emissions and so that's something bad and norway which has had a lot of ev incentives over the past several years they're moving away from them now and realizing that you know what evs are better than gas cars but what's better than evs is walking and cycling having large evs and large gas cars suvs that are very dangerous for pedestrians and cyclists um, is bad. So they're um, trying to re reduce these incentives and go over here. Let me see. Uh, there is one last article I want to point. I can find it. Okay, yeah. So there was this very important article that basically has talked about how uh, pedestrian deaths have hit a 40-year high. So in 2021, Pedestrian deaths climbed to a 40-year high. It's the highest it's ever been since like the 1980s. And there were a staggering uh, almost 8,000 pedestrian deaths. And they said there's four reasons. And the four reasons are, you know, like there's bad infrastructure, not enough sidewalks. The roads near houses are um, dangerous. But number four was there's too many SUVs and pickups on the road. And it's because when the pickups are bigger, they have more blind spots. Two... They're heavier, so they inflict more kinetic energy. Three, they're higher up. So when they impact a pedestrian, they're going to impact them in the chest and the head, which is obviously more dangerous than impacting them on the leg or the hip. So, you know, getting hit by a car when you're a pedestrian is always bad. But if you're going to have a choice between getting hit in the chest or the head versus leg or hip, it's much better to get hit in the leg or the hip. And you see the growth of um, light trucks and SUVs and the, the, the trend downward in passenger cars over the past several years. Um, and this is why many countries are taking aggressive measures to make cars safer for the people outside the vehicle. So the NTSA safety standards only look at safety of passengers inside the vehicle. But if you look at other countries, like a lot of European safety standards, they test for safety against pedestrians, cyclists, and other vehicles. And I think that's maybe a, the way we should go. Now, another thing that Norway is doing, and this Nature article um, supports this, is having basically a penalty on weight by taxing weight of the vehicle. So that uh, would disincentivize heavy vehicles. And then the last thing that this talks about at the end I thought was very important and very applicable to Aptera because what they were saying is the Inflation Reduction Act um, that was signed by uh, President Biden in August includes these tax credits. And we've talked about these tax credits a lot in this um, channel. And they are for cars up to 55000 But as an implicit incentive to buy a larger vehicle, eligible SUVs can cost as much as $88,000. The the new law offers nothing for buyers of e-bikes, e-cargo bikes, electric golf carts, and also, as we know, offers nothing for buyers of small, efficient electric vehicles like the Aptera.
or the Archimoto or the Electromechanica Solo. And those are the kinds of things that you should be incentivizing, if anything. And instead, we're incentivizing large electric vehicles. So things like this, okay, well, this is overpriced for it, but large SUVs that are cheaper could get the, um, could get the incentive, but small efficient vehicles do not get the incentive. So I hope that eventually we will move towards something more like Norway, where we either get rid of EV incentives and boost walking and cycling, or add in some kind of tax for heavier vehicles, because we need to get rid of this arms race that says we just need to get bigger and bigger cars to feel safe. I mean, just think of a world where most the average car is uh, 9,000 pounds. Then people are like, well, you know what? If the average car is 9,000 pounds, I need a 12,000 pound vehicle to feel safe. And then when the average car becomes 12,000 pounds, people are going to want 20,000 pound cars to feel safe. And um, it'd be better if we were all driving around 1,000 pound, 2,000 pound vehicles um, like the Aptera and then everyone would feel safer in smaller cars. It'd be safer for pedestrians, it'd be safer for cyclists. And as someone who basic, I cycle to work every day, and that is what 95% of my commuting is in a cycle, I feel, I would feel much safer if there were a bunch of Apteras around rather than a bunch of Hummer EVs or Silverado EVs or, or um, you know, Cadillac Lyrics uh, running around on the road. And so the, the things that I'm hoping will happen is that we'll start having safety standards that not only look at safety of passengers within the vehicle, but safety for people outside the vehicle, other cars, pedestrians, cyclists, and then have incentives for buying targeted to encourage smaller, lighter, more efficient vehicles rather than heavier vehicles by giving them loopholes to get out of um, safety standards and loopholes to get out of um, efficiency standards and also kind of giving implicit incentives by, by letting them cost more and still getting the, uh, the tax credits. All right, well, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Thanks as always to our supporting members and have a great day.